Hi, this is Monty Twining, co-founder and product designer here at Roost & Root. The purpose of this video is to walk you through some of the design features of our Stand Up Chicken Coop series uh, using the CAD software that we use both to design and build this chicken coop. So this video is going to cover both our standard and our XL model of our Stand Up Chicken Coop. Um, and the stand-up chicken coop, really the only difference between the um, XL model and the standard model is the XL will hold eight hens instead of six hens. Um, and like all of our walk-in coops, the, the big feature to a walk-in coop is that if it's snowing outside, if it's raining outside or whatever, and you want to collect eggs or you want to attend to your chickens or even clean up, not only are chickens protected, but you're protected. That's the whole idea behind a walk-in coop. These, this video is going to dive into three areas of the coop, the concept of design for three areas of the coops that are for the chickens. Not really going to talk about it a whole lot as far as the people are concerned. Uh, and that is the run space, uh, the egg box space, and the roost space. Um, and I'll just kind of switch back and forth between the XL model and the standard model as necessary. Okay, talking about the run space in this coop, the, the major consideration for the run space in a coop is the amount of the run space. Um, all of our coops are designed to be able to lock your birds up in them uh, indefinitely for their entire lives um, and for them to be able to stay healthy and have enough room. And uh, the standard model of uh, the stand-up coop is rated for six hens, and that is in part because of the ground space um, and the XL model is rated for eight hens. And as you can see, um, when I switch back and forth in these, there's just more ground space um, in the XL model. There'll be more egg box space, more roost space, more water, more feed also, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, the real feature of the run in these coops is that they're, they've got a pretty well protected back. So if you live somewhere where there's a prevailing north wind, and you were to put the back of this coop towards the north, your birds would have a really good wind break that's just sort of built in to the coop. Whether you got the XL or whether you got the standard model, they would have a really good wind break. The other thing is on all of our coops, and this one is no exception, we put a turnout door on them. Uh, a lot of people will in fact leave their birds in the coop for their life. Um, they are designed to be self-contained, but a lot of people also are gonna want to uh, be able to turn out their birds in the daytime so that they can forage, eat insects, uh, just get stretch their legs, whatever. Um, these doors on our walk-in series coops, as well as all of our coops, are also designed to accept an automatic door. So as it comes, you've got a kind of a manual turnout door. If you decided to replace this door, uh, chickendoors.com sells their standard automatic door and it kind of screws on over the face of this and you could have an automatic turnout door on any of our coops. Um, the other thing about the roost space in this coop is in the back of this coop we put this daytime roost bar. If it's really really cold, windy, wet uh, and your chickens are just looking for some place to kind of hang down low to the ground and hang out, they'll jump up on this roost bar and they'll just kind of hang out. Um, there is uh, about 25 square feet of space in the bottom of the standard model, about uh, 32 in the XL model. And that gives us about four square feet per bird, which is 50 to 100% more than the federal government requires for those eggs that you buy at the store that cost so much money that are free range. Uh, free range birds, as far as the government are concerned, are birds that get two or three square feet per bird. And we calculate all of this at four square feet of bird to be a little bit more generous. So moving on to the egg boxes, um, the egg boxes in this coop are integrated in pretty closely to the run. Um, we've kind of tried to position the run roost bars, which I'll show you here in a minute in the next section up higher. Uh, you want the egg box down a little lower. The big thing with the egg box and all of our walk-in coops is that you can collect eggs from either uh, the outside of the coop and this is kind of a dual layer egg box this will give you an idea that birds enter the egg box from within and you could collect the eggs um, from outside the coop if you wanted to um, or you could go inside the coop i'll go to a cutaway version of this um, which is kind of missing the side but you could from inside the coop also access the egg boxes 
The only real difference between the egg box space and the XL versus the standard is the XL is slightly longer. The XL is rated for eight birds. The standard model is rated for six. Uh, and it's a lot of birds. I mean, six birds is going to pretty easily give you a couple of dozen eggs a week, uh, even, you know, average it over the course of the year. Um, and eight birds, you know, and a, a dozen more than that. Um, so these these coops can produce a lot of eggs. Um, they're um, farm fresh eggs, so they're like the best eggs you can get. Um, and you can collect these eggs from either inside or outside. Um, the other thing to mention about these egg boxes is that they have um, wire bottoms in them. And the reason that they have wire bottoms in them is for whatever reason, if an egg gets broken, you want to be able to wash it out. And if you got a solid bottom in an egg box, it's just virtually impossible to get rid of the yolk and the white um, that break inside of, of these coops. If something, well, sooner or later, an egg's going to break inside of your egg box. There's really not a whole lot else to say about these egg boxes other than they're, they're the dark area on the coop. They're designed to be washed and they certainly can hold enough hens. Hens will actually take turns. Uh, if you got hens that are really private and they want to be in there all by themselves, they can kind of let somebody else know that. And they'll just take turns at the egg box until probably by around lunchtime, they'll have all taken their turn and laid eggs. So the last uh, space of the coop to talk about is the roost space. And I'm going to use this uh, cutaway drawing of the XL model to kind of show you how this works um, in these stand-up coops. It's, it's, a unique, it's unique from all the rest of our coops in terms of how it works. Uh, we do sell... A pretty decent number of these coops because of this uh, in colder regions. It's fine for uh, warmer regions also, but uh, the roost on this coop is pretty buttoned up. So I'm going to kind of peel away uh, the front of the roost so that you kind of get an idea of how it works. So there's this day roost bar that's in the bottom of the run that I showed you earlier. And basically for the chickens to roost, they jump up these bars, kind of like they would the bars uh, or the limbs of a tree uh, to get up to these top roost bars. So the rating on these coops in, in, in regard to the number of chickens that can sleep, that's what the roost is for, is they're sleeping at nighttime, is based on the length of these top two roost bars. These other lower roost bars, we really don't count those as places that chickens could roost because these top birds would just poop on them. Um, but these top roost bars are sized to where they can hold four birds a piece. Um, they're pretty long. I kind of had to get a different angle of it. They're pretty long. Four birds a piece on the XL model um, or on the standard model. Here, I can kind of hide this real fast and get you pretty quickly to the same sort of a view. Um, that you can kind of see the roost bars, same sort of arrangement, just not as long as they are on the XL model. So the other thing we put into the roost on this coop um, is this door where you could grab your birds if you needed to, to medicate them or maybe clip their wings or something like that. Um, and then the egg box, which we talked about earlier, that they're accessible from those roost bars. So they kind of have a, like a little tree limb system inside of this enclosed roost area. So another thing to mention about this uh, roost area are our roost bars. Uh, we cut our roost bars octagonally uh, because while well, chickens' feet are segmented, if you'll look at a chicken's foot, it's not so unlike your fingers and that it has joints. And it's going to really naturally wrap around these octagonal roost bars in a way that they get a really good grip at nighttime when they're asleep. They're very comfortable on them. They can hunker down with their bodies over the tops of their feet and help keep their feet warm even in these sub-zero conditions that chickens are famous for being able to handle. This coop is also unique in that it's our only coop, well our heritage coops have sheds built into them, but of our other walk-in coops, this is our only coop that's kind of got this upper storage area. You can fold this out and uh, it, it is it was originally conceived of as a place where you could put the storm panels, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, into this area for storage, but you could also put chicken treats. Um, it's pretty strong. I guess it could hold a 25 pound bag of feed or so. I don't know that I'd put an 80 or a 50 pound bag of feed up there regularly, um, but it is wired so that it ventilates in um, to the roost area, but there's a top on it so the birds can't get up in here. Um, and so it, it's just set up as a storage area. Um, the only other thing I can think of to maybe mention about this roost is you can see that it's very enclosed. 
So if you put the storm panel, which I'll talk about in a minute on these two doors, uh, these birds are really buttoned up at nighttime and uh, can really get out of the cold weather pretty easily. So the next thing to go over is kind of what I'm calling our shelter plan for these coops. Um, so it's impossible to overstate how much cold hardy chickens are than they are heat tolerant. Chickens are not that heat tolerant. They at about 100 degrees really start to struggle. Um, and as far as cold goes, I mean, chickens don't really start struggling until it gets sub zero. Um, and our coops kind of get knocked from sometimes from being pretty wide open. But the fact is you need a wide open coop for chickens, you know, 90% of the year for 90% of the locations here in, in the United States. And um, the fact is also that chickens need a lot of airflow to keep from having respiratory problems. And so these coops are designed with their in, in stock form to be pretty open and, and get you through the vast majority of your year unless you live in some really cold places. And by cold places, I mean some places where it is sub-zero more than two or three weeks of the year or that your coop's just gonna like pile up inside with snow. I'm not talking about a little bit of snow inside, but I'm talking about where, you know, it's like a foot deep inside and you, you clearly don't want that. So our answer to that is what we call storm panels. I'm gonna illustrate them on the XL model. The, the idea is the same for the standard model, but these are um, custom blended poly, panels that are translucent so they still let light in and they use this nifty 3d printed clip that we've developed to very positively latch onto the wire of the coop and basically button it up um, they do still let a little bit of air in along the edges because like i said you got to have some airflow to get rid of the humidity even even when it's sub-zero temperatures it's humidity from the respiration of the chickens and from their chicken poop that actually causes frostbite. So you still need airflow to kind of control the humidity, even though it, it's cold. Um, and these storm panels are, are designed to cover the coop. Now you might, and sometimes in the year, uh, leave some of them on and some of them off. Um, the roost area in this coop is protected really, really well. And so if it's something to where it's getting into the single digits or teens at night, but it's getting you know, above freezing 40s even or, or so uh, in, in during the day, you might not even put them on until you're consistently getting wind driven snow or wind driven sub zero winds. So the last thing to talk about is uh, accessories that we offer for this coop. It's it's not a very big list. The, the storm panels are accessory um, because it kind of depends on where you live. And we have a little section in, down further on the website page called climate considerations with a, a nice map and kind of a more detailed explanation of whether or not you should be purchasing storm panels. And you can always just call us. Um, but the main options that we offer for this coop and that are, you know, real popular um, are a water. Uh, it's a poultry nipple style water that has these little nipples that uh, the chickens reach up to and, and get to from the ground. Um, these are like, we call them no poop waters because they're overhead. The chickens aren't pooping on them. And, and I don't know if you've ever had other kinds of chicken waters, but it's kind of depressing when they're pooping in their, in their water. Um, and our, we also have what we call our no poop feeders. These are gravity feeders that we build that hold enough feed um, for probably four days. So the, like, the way we do water and feed is kind of think about it in terms of a long weekend, like a four day, maybe even a five day weekend. So if you fill up any of our coops with the rated number of hens, so for like the XL model, in this case, it's eight hens for the standard model of the stand up, it's six hens, that you're gonna be able to be gone for four or five days and leave these birds um, safely, securely locked up inside and they'll have all the food and all the water that they need. Um, so that's why you see two feeders in the XL and you see only one feeder in the standard size coops because of the number of birds that the coop is rated for. Um, the other thing to talk about that we give as an option in this cutaway view is just real convenient to do that is egg box liners. So these egg box liners um, can, um, they, they are custom cut to fit this coop specifically. They're kind of a specifically made turf kind of a product that allows the chickens to um, the, these to, to cover the wire basically is what it's doing. They're washable. 
They're not overly comfy. So your chickens are kind of motivated to get in there, lay their eggs and hop on out and get back to doing something else so they don't poop on their eggs. And um, I guess really the only other thing to say is if you do live someplace that it's really, really cold, um, our waters will accept a, a heater that you can purchase on Amazon or someplace we don't manufacture so we don't sell it. Um, and that'll, that'll keep your water from freezing, probably reasonably speaking, down to zero degrees. I think once it gets lower than zero degrees, it's, it's really hard to keep water from freezing. And then th we also sell this patented that we do manufacture 3D printed freeze guard poultry nipple that replaces the standard poultry nipple. And again, if you live somewhere where it's sub uh, zero temperatures, you might consider it. If it freezes on and off a week or two per year, you know, the standard nipples are probably um, a good way to go. Um, so depending on where you live, and again, that climate considerations tab below will outline that for you and you can kind of figure it out there. I hope that helps you understand the design ideas behind the stand-up chicken coop. And I hope to have you as a customer too. Thank you.